On today's episode of the Free Pilot Training Channel, I'm going to show you how to perform a normal takeoff. The first step in performing a normal takeoff is to run the pre-takeoff checklist. It's also really important that you make sure you've done all the other checklists and you're ready to go. Okay, pre-takeoff checklist. Flaps are zero. Mixture best power. That's full rich today. Carb heats off. Tornado heat, we don't have it. Transponder, we're squawking out. Heading bug, we don't have one. Doors and windows are closed. Landing light on. Strobes, we don't have those. Time note, brakes release. Ready to go. I'm ready. Let's get out of here. Next, let's taxi up to the VFR hold line and then make sure final's clear. You don't want someone landing on top of you when you're about to take off. I'm going to take a big swath out here. That way I can just double check to make sure final's clear. Make a bid towards the approach in. It's clear. Nobody on the runway. Nobody's coming. Next, you want to make your radio call. Remember, if you're at the towered airfield, make sure you get a takeoff clearance before you cross the VFR hold line. I've got a video specifically on radio communications coming out really soon. Make sure you're keeping an eye out for that. Benita traffic, Skyhawk 3148 X ray taking runway 17 for a south departure. Benita. Alright, with the crosswind, we got a right to left crosswind, so I'm going to go ailerons into the wind. Once I'm lined up on the runway here, ailerons into the wind. As I just mentioned, I have a right to left crosswind here. When I say ailerons into the wind, I mean turn the yoke into the wind. This keeps the wind from picking up our upwind wing and skidding us to the side of the runway. Max power. Airspeed's coming alive. Oil pressure's in the green. When I say airspeed's coming alive, that means your airspeed indicator should be getting upward movement. Then the needle on your oil pressure gauge should be in the green range. If neither one of these happen on takeoff, immediately reduce the power to idle and slowly brake to a stop. From there, we can reevaluate the situation. As long as these two are good, put your heels on the floor and your toes on the bottom of the rudder pedals. We're going to be sliding these rudder pedals back and forth to steer the airplane on the runway. Now shift your eyes to the end of the runway and keep yourself on center line. If the airplane drifts to the right of center line, gently press on the left rudder pedal to get yourself back over there. Then if you drift to the left of center line, you'll gently press on the right rudder pedal to move yourself back to center line. The ultimate goal here is to keep yourself right in the middle of the runway and to play the best game of Pac-Man ever. Now I'm just waiting for rotate. My rotate's at 52 knots, there it is. At your rotate speed, I want you to gently pull back on the yoke until the top of the cowling just touches the horizon. Then we'll just leave it here and we'll wait for the airspeed to build up until we hit VY. Then once it does, we'll just pitch to maintain VY. There's VY and I'm just going to climb out at VY. My VY is 70 knots. At 100 feet above the ground, I consider this safely airborne, so I start running the after takeoff checklist here. 70 knots, climbing away. Safely airborne, flaps up, landing lights off. After takeoff checklist is complete. Now we're departing to the, departing to the south. Climbing out at 70 knots, right rudder pressure throughout the takeoff. High power settings, low airspeed, we need right rudder pressure. I need to fight those left turning tendencies. Climbing out 70 knots, see I'm getting a little fast here, so I'm gonna pitch up slightly. Just departing to the south. And Benita traffic, Skyhawk 3148 X-ray, clear of your airspace to the southwest, Benita. 